Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, and I'm broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. And uh, today's topic, we're going to talk about the, uh, the nervous system and the emotional body uh, and meditation. How you can be in meditation and be quiet, yet in the meantime, your nervous system could be very much affected. So uh, I'm going to get into that and explain that to you um, because it, it does create confusion. And for some people think that if you're a meditative and you're in absolute silence and you have discovered inner silence, that means you're bulletproof. And that's not true. So we're going to get into that part. Um, for the moment, and those of, as again, those of you who are on Facebook, we're broadcasting uh, live on face, Facebook, and I am on the Zoom platform. Uh, I can't go back uh, and check things out. I can't go back and forth. So I appreciate your comments. I read them later, but I can answer your questions. If you're interested to communicating with me directly, please come on the Zoom, and you can get into it by going to my website, which is zaratustra.tv. For the moment, we're just going to do a simple meditation. We've talked about this before. A lot of you, most of you have been with me before, so you already know the drill, that one of the most simple ways of meditating is simply following your thoughts. Pay attention to your thoughts by turning your attention inwards. As you turn your attention inwards, you follow the stream of the thoughts and just be attentive and see where they come from. Where do your thoughts come from? And if you simply turn your attention in that direction, what happens, and you may have to try it a few times, but what happens, you dive into a deep silence. Because thoughts come from nowhere. It's like you're entering into a big body, a, a, a swimming pool, and you dive into the swimming pool. Or it's a pond, it's a lake. By bringing your attention inward. Just switch the attention inwards towards where the thoughts come from. It's not a mental exercise. It's simply shift of attention. You're shifting your attention. You don't have to think about it. Simply look within turn the headlights inwards and a very simple amazing phenomena will take place your mind falls into silence deep silence comes And you fall into this place that's quiet.
And if thoughts come, don't beat yourself up. Just simply, again, look within yourself. Just look inside. Shift the attention inwards. And then you fall back into this quiet place inside yourself. And simply, you keep your attention in one pointedness within yourself. And what happens is as if you're diving under the ocean, as if you're going deep. and things get more quiet. Yet, on the surface, you may be hearing noises. Your attention is going inwards towards stillness and silence. but you hear noises above and you're slowly getting separated from the noise. The noise does not represent you. It's not your representation. So don't get caught up with that. Just simply dive deeper. But do it effortlessly. Don't try. Simply shift your attention. Shift your attention inwards. It's a shift. You're just turning your attention inwards. And you go deeper. And as you're going deeper within yourself, it becomes more quiet. You go deeper within yourself. As if you're in an elevator and the elevator is going deep to the depths of earth. And it gets more quiet. Your body gets warm. You feel sensations and something begin to take, take over. Something bigger than you, something bigger than me. It's a deep silence. It's a presence. It's quiet. And there is a sensation of expansion. Something's opening up. Space is being created. 
because you're simply present, you are here, you're quiet, and you're letting go of your agenda. Even meditating, not even trying to meditate. And in this place, you're allowing meditation to come to you. Meditation appears. Meditation takes over. And if you just relax in this place, the guru appears. Your inner sat guru will appear from your own majestic presence and you will feel the bliss, the love, the presence. And when you come to this place within yourself, there is a direct transmission of the absolute. A love affair starts to take place. Because you're quiet, you're available, and you're present. Your guards are down. You have traveled beyond your ego. And the presence appears. Love appears. Something may, way more powerful than anything we have experienced begin to reveal itself. The love of God, the love of self, the presence.
are simply here together. Immersed in the love of the self. Showering in the love of God. simply being an expression of the absolute. A different look and taste and smell of the divine presence, her majesty. We are in satsang. which is the association of the monks on the path. So slowly come back, slowly, slowly, come back here. So you're shifting your attention from the inner world beyond the thoughts to the other world, utter world. And before we get engaged in a conversation, let's just for a moment put your hands on your heart you come to this place that you are already experiencing. I would like you to put your story away, whatever story you have of yourself. We all have a story of ourselves. It's the nature of the mind to create a story. When you don't do the things you're supposed to be doing, you don't like yourself or you blame yourself. So in this moment, I would like you to put your story away as if you're storyless, as if you have no past and you have no future and you're naked in this moment at the presence of Her Majesty. And I would like you to accept and love yourself in this very moment, since you have no story. And you're able to feel the love of God the presence, 
and experience the guru within, the powerful presence of the guru of love in your heart. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 And there's a quick encounter of a moment of you and yourself, the presence. So, long time ago, I thought that the more you awaken, you become, or if you go through final self-realization, that means you are bulletproof and you don't feel anything. Um, you don't get jealous, you don't get angry, you don't get frustrated, you don't get sad, you don't get impatient. Um, basically, that's how I was projecting on my sat guru, believing that he's Superman. Yet, he, was, he is Superman, or he was, or he is. Um, but not in that sense. And I will get into this. Then you can discover the self and dive deep within yourself and recognize the space which is already here and recognizing of that place, recognizing of the truth of who you are. And in this shift and realization, the mind 
you actually go beyond the mind into the silence. That doesn't necessarily mean the mind disappears. It means that you have discovered something beyond the mind which is very still and very quiet. And recognizing that as the true self, as who you are, something which is solid and it's always here. And this place neither comes nor goes. It's always here. It's a recognition of it. It's a place that watching everything. It's witnessing. It's hearing. It's seeing things. It sees things come and go. It's aware of everything that is happening within its field. Yet, we do have our emotional body that it gets affected. So you could be developing a deep silence within yourself and dive into this place that you're very still, you're very silent within yourself. Yet, you have become very, very sensitive to noises, to the elements. And I'm sure a lot of you have been on the path for a long time because we've been, we've been together, so I know you've been doing your work, is you have experienced this. Like what happens is you become sensitive to the utter noises. Like you go to a restaurant and if it's too busy or the music is too loud or they're playing a music that doesn't resonate with you, it's frequency is different. You can't really eat your food or digest it and you're not comfortable. So you may just get up and leave and go somewhere else. Same way, you may be around friends that you used to be very close to and really enjoy being around them. And you go through a reunion and start ha hanging out with them again. And then you realize that you can't really be around them for too long because of the vibrations of the frequency they're in. And the conversations could be too worldly. And they're talking about cryptocurrency and the pandemic and the politics and blah, 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 or whatever. And now you have evolved and you have come into this deep silence within yourself. You have become friends, lover of inner peace, lover of silence. And these kind of conversations affect you and disturb you because of where they come from, of the frequency that they, they're in. Or there's all kinds of different scenarios that it happens every day. When you are in touch with any kind of outside element, whatever that is, whether it's temperature, whether it's sun, too much sun, too much cloud, too windy, too noisy, too wavy, too many cars, too much pollution. The water maybe has too much chemicals in it. Send you develop sensitivity. And that's really normal, normal for A, as we're growing older, B, as we're becoming more expanded, more conscious. There's an expansion happening. And in that ex ex expansion, 
you're losing your numbness because majority of the people on the planet are numb. They're sleeping, they're, they're sleepwalking. They're half asleep, half awake. As Robert Anton Wilson in his book called Prometheus Rising, is a part he says, how do you expect, how do you expect fairness and decency on the planet of sleepy people? On a planet that majority of its inhabitants are half asleep, they're in coma. You can't expect furnace and decency because they're not expanded, they're not conscious, they have not awakened yet. Even though they are our own selves and they're aspects of one self, but the parts that are sleepy and there's similarly to us, there are parts that is sleepy, but we're waking up, awakening, Awakening also means sensitivity, becoming sensitive. Becoming sensitive, sensitivity. Means you're waking up, your different parts are waking up. So you're sensitive, you notice things. Now, in human relationship, we call it psychic. We say that you have developed psychic powers. And you can read people. And that's a very natural thing happens to the spiritual warrior. As you're waking up, obviously, you develop what is called psychic powers, because you're becoming more expanded, your antenna is starting to work. <coughs> Excuse me. And your inner GPS gets activated. So you're becoming more in tune with your inner voice, with your inner self, with the guru within yourself, as you're getting more tuned in, you're waking up, your antennas are starting to work. So consequently, you begin to sense other people, to feel them, to feel their needs, to feel their sensitivities, to pick up their thoughts, how they're feeling, where they're at. For example, you're driving and somebody's behind you is anxious. Someone's driving behind you and they're really anxious. And you sense it. So for me, it's something that I just pull over and let them go because I don't want that anxious energy behind me. I sense it with them. So I don't, I don't need to block them, let them go. Or you're... You're in the airport, you're waiting in line to go through the immigration or you're, you're about to go pick up your flight and someone's behind you is really anxious. Not that they're going to get ahead, but it's like, I don't want that anxious energy behind me. I let them go in front of me. Okay, I can wait a little bit longer and let them go. Or you're in a supermarket, someone's behind you, and they're really anxious. They got this anxious energy. They want to keep pushing you or get ahead of you. Not that anything's going to happen, or they get ahead. So what happens is you begin to sense things and feel things and become more sensitive. Developing sensitivity is not a weakness. And it's not a bad thing. That does not mean you are not meditative 
and you're not silent or something happens, you get some news or somehow you get triggered and it creates anxiety inside you. Let's say something has happened and something's been triggered in you. You don't have any control over your nervous system. You cannot control it. If you could, you would have, you would do something. You would control and manipulate. We're all here because we all have tried different methods, courses, classes, techniques, seminars in learning how to manipulate our relationships, our family, our finances. We have been working on it continuously for past 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 90 years to how to manipulate unconsciously. I'm not saying when I say manipulate in a bad way, but we're all trying to figure out how we can manipulate things so things go our way. So if you succeed that, don't you think you're going to be manipulating your nervous system? So your nervous system does according to what you wish, means it remains really calm and quiet all the time? You will. You will be able to manipulate it so it remains calm and quiet, but you can't. I mean, of course, you can drink a little whiskey or vodka or smoke something or take in Valium or Ambion or some kind of medication of some sort, external help to mellow down your nervous system if you have to. You do what you have to do. But the nervous system getting triggered through whatever from the emotional body, something happened, you got some bad news, an event happened in your life, whatever, it's traumatic or not, whatever. I mean, anything can happen. And it's triggered your nervous system. And now you're in some sort of anxiety. To me, that's not an indication of weakness or an indication that you're not living meditatively. And you have not discovered silence. Discovering inner silence, discovering that place within yourself, which is quiet, which is still, has really nothing to do with your nervous system and your emotional body. If it did, then we all could work it out in a way that we can manipulate things. And the first thing we would want to manipulate is to feel good all the time in the human body, to be blissed out all the time, to be in just this state of complete bliss. So you won't get angry, you won't get agitated, you don't get nervous, you don't feel any kind of feelings, whatever that is. Nothing appears in you. You manipulate it. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't do well with air conditioning. So. so my dear sister Hilda brought this up and she messaged me yesterday that uh, talk about this. And it's been interesting because 
I've experienced it directly in past couple of months in a few different places that I've been residing in Tulum that somehow I ended up being next door to construction sites. And some days they're bringing these huge bulldozers with jackhammers and banging in the ground. And it was very interesting because two, three times I experienced like my entire nervous system was really affected. And one day I had a lot of work to do and I thought I'm going to go crazy. I had to leave the house and I leave the house and I'm riding my motorcycle and I couldn't drive my motorcycle. I thought I'm going to fall down because of the effect of the noise on the nervous system. But does that mean you're less conscious? Does it mean you haven't decided inner peace? Does it mean that you haven't, decided, you haven't recognized silence within yourself? Not in my experience. So it's good to distinguish the two because what happens is it's very easy to project on the teacher, on the guru, and someone else and say, okay, this other person is always going to be in this state. And that's not true because I've seen my sad guru, Papaji, getting angry and frustrated from some of the students and kick him out of the house. I've seen Mom Ritananda Mai, Divine Mother, the Hugging Mother, getting angry with um, workers trying, were painting the ashram, and she was very upset with them because they didn't follow her directions. I've seen different things. So the emotion and the nervous system can easily be affected by elements, whether it's inner chemical reactions of the body or what is going on outside in the world. But that doesn't mean it touches the truth of who you are. That doesn't mean you don't know who you are. And you haven't found that place within yourself. It's two different stories. So I'm sharing this with you because it's a good subject to talk about it. First, one is it's been my own direct experience in past couple months. Secondly, is that the mind comes and begins to judge. The mind comes and says, well, if I was awakened, if I was realized, if I do my work right, then I shouldn't be affected. I shouldn't feel these things. I shouldn't get angry. I shouldn't feel sad. I shouldn't get anxious. So, I hope this topic brings some, put some light on, on the thoughts or the doubts and the self judgments that we come across ourselves on this, on our spiritual path, because it's easy to deviate from it and go into this place and saying, oh, wow, you know, my guru, my teacher is never affected by anything. And because I'm not there, then I'm not doing a good job. I'm lost. No, that's not it. And then there is another thing is different body mechanisms, different body mind mechanisms, different people are different. Some people by nature are quiet and they're very, they seem very centered. It's their nature. They don't talk fast. They're not talking loud. Uh, they're not talking from here. They're calm and quiet. It's the nature of the person. And some people, they talk 
and you know maybe they use their hands a lot or maybe they they talk fast it's just their system the way they are so everybody's got their own speed the the style that they have but then again that doesn't represent inner silence inner peace for me is being around somebody and it doesn't matter where they're quiet or they speak calmly or they speak fast is more what i feel with them energetically i feel their vibrations whether they talk from their mind it's heady or they're really coming from a deep inner experience or they they're speaking from their heart or they're operating from their mind they may say a lot of beautiful words but it's not coming and i don't feel it with that so then it's a different story i don't feel it there's a matter what they say you can see it with politicians like there's a debate and a couple of, you know let's say there's a presidential debate or there's a couple of politicians debating with each other or there's a couple of whatever story and you just don't feel it somebody may say all the right words but as you become more sensitive and more expanded you just you have a feeling i don't trust this guy i don't feel it this is like everyday experience you go through it with different people you meet people different transactions you have with people that you sense it. Now let's see if we have any questions here anybody has any questions for me um okay we have here daniela says how can we help them okay i think you're referring to how can we help the sleepy people around the planet is that right uh daniela are you there are you still yes here? yes yes i'm here it's yeah huh. is that am i right you're referring to how we can help the sleepy people yes because i personally see a lot of suffering around myself and around the world and i i i know that my work is to be the best version of myself but i like an example i don't want to get into any preaching or any uh, type of conversation that will trigger someone's reaction because i notice that you know those not awakened people they are kind of uh you know they don't they don't want to hear the truth or they don't want to hear like you know statement or things that it's like it's all bs please get real you know what i mean look around so i personally because i'm a i'm a teacher you know i want to perform also that role uh where i can inspire or maybe you know just radiate more of that love where uh, i can be more helpful because i see a lot of loss of esteem and and i've been there and and it and there are so many young people that they they don't know who they are they don't know their purpose it like like it happened to me i had no idea why i'm here what i'm supposed to be doing and then slowly i found my way but not everyone is uh lucky i'm going to say you know uh to you know follow their intuition where eventually okay it's not this group but i learned something okay let's try this other group okay well mm, okay let's go to the next and so forth and so on so yeah i would like to be more helpful of course i have to heal myself and do the my meditation and my reiki my prayers and all of that uh uh but I, i i would love to know how can i be at service to others because that's what really makes me happy right you get it 
Well, uh, you already said it is number one is to work on ourselves and to become self-realized. That's the number one thing. And the more you work on yourself and the more you operate from a conscious place, self-consciousness comes in and you're aware of your intentions, you're aware of your movements, you're aware of uh, how unconsciously we're trying to manipulate things in our relationships uh, or relationship to whatever. The more you become aware of yourself, the more you're going to have an impact on your environment. Even if you're not working with people or you're not teaching, you're not a spiritual teacher or you're not a healer or, or channeler or psychic, your presence will have an effect on, on your surrounding because you're discovering a deep inner peace and inner truth and you're starting to live that truth and that by itself has an effect on the people who come in contact with you so to me it always starts from there it's been years and years and years i don't know how many years is i don't try to preach to anybody and uh only if someone's open and they're available and they want to know, then I share with them. And don't have any intention to persuade anyone to look at things the way I do. Uh, I can see sometimes something within me that wants to, there's a desire that maybe wants to win this conversation or to be right. And I can see that comes and uh, be simply being aware of it because I don't need to be right. I don't need to pursue anyone to think the way I do. Uh, that always comes back into trusting and comes back into realizing that the creation is the business of the creator. I didn't create this, not consciously, not, I, I wasn't here 5,000 years ago, not in this way. Yes, you are, but not in this egoic way as a sense of being separated. So, the creation is the business of the creator. So I don't need to enlighten people if they're not interested. And that takes a lot of pressure off of you. But Who's that doesn't... Huh? Who's at Zaratustra? One thing that I was going to... Sometimes when I find myself having some sort of conversation because there is a lot of guilt usually around... I, I try, I tend to say things like, you know, the beautiful things about life is that, you know, we are here to experience life, you know, that we know because we have free will and trying to be, uh, sounds like there is no judgment, you know, because nobody can really teach you or make you see the light or understand certain things. So it's kind of like, okay, have fun, you know, you, whatever okay. I, I feel, within myself that sooner or later, eventually, who knows, maybe this person is going to uh, understand something without me say, hey, you should start to meditate. Oh, you should do this, you should do that. I hear right. that. So, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. And definitely the focus has to be within myself first. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, I'm not telling anybody what to do. Maybe somebody has a very deep desire inside them to enlighten the planet. And they feel like this is their mission. Their mission is to be out there and enlightening and saving souls. Far out. I mean, if that, per that if for example, I just say you, but I don't mean you in that way. But if you have that desire and it's happening for you, 
means that spirit, that life force is coming through you to really passionately enlightening people far out. There's nothing wrong with that either. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. I can only speak from my own experience. My experience is I love, I love what I'm doing and I miss it. Like I was missing the academy. I was really looking forward to today of being together. And recently, yeah, I realized I haven't had a uh, online retreat and I really enjoy it. And, and uh, so I designed a new uh, a seven day free global online retreat, which is uh, is about the birth of new, the new you. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it because I love teaching. I love it when I'm in this place and we go to this connection with each other and the energy is flowing. And, but a big part of it is when I truthfully look into it is why am I doing this? Is the number one thing, being very honest, is because I love doing it. You understand? It's like being really honest with yourself. Yeah, because I love doing it. And I don't even have to get paid for it. I mean, I would be doing this every day for free if, if I was supported because, because I love doing it. But of course, you have to create a way of supporting yourself too. So uh, in the old days, in the ashrams, the guru would be the ashram. This is like a few hundred years ago up to even now. Then the ashram in, the, in traditional in India, uh, the Hindu ashrams, because that's the major religion, mostly Hinduism, although they have other religions there, was designed by the wealthy, by the Brahmins, supporting the ashram and the guru, so the spiritual seeker could come to the ashram and do spiritual practice. And of course, they would also help volunteering during the work at the ashram. So, but basically was supported by the wealthy to create a platform for the guru to be able to teach and for the commoner people who don't have that financial ability to come and be a part of the ashram. And so they don't have to be working all day long trying to make a living to come and be able to meditate and work on themselves. That's how the ashrams were created. And they changed their forms and looks. They're still there. So, but back to what we were talking about is the surrendering to what is, surrendering to your energy. And what is, where is your energy going? For example, for me is that I'm happiest when I'm teaching and I'm working. But it's number one is for myself because I love it. If every time I taught and I, and I did this work, I would get a neck ache or get a severe headache then I would stop doing it because it was, it would become painful. So you have to just be very clear. What are you doing it for? Is it coming from an ego or is it coming really from your heart? Is it really serving your inner being and supporting your being? Uh, the spiritual ego is very clever, hides really well, and can sneak in there very, very easily and fool you. 
So a deep part of me is, I don't think existence needs me. I don't think God needs me to enlighten the, the planet. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, what's special about me that God would want to do it through me? Why God isn't, God can do it through anybody else. So in my head, I don't go there with this story that I'm special. It's just what's apparent is it's happening. And of course, it's happening as long as it can make sense. Because it may come to a point that it's not working anymore. Maybe people don't gather around you anymore. Maybe you can't afford putting it, any, putting it on anymore. And then it's not happening anymore. Maybe the transmission is not happening. And it becomes like empty words. You sit there, you have your audience, and you're just blah, blah, blahing. But there's no transmission happening. But we're a sp small group. We're a small platform. But so far, past... 10, 11, 12 years that I've been doing this work professionally, somehow it just, somehow it's sustaining itself and somehow it's happening. So there's a few people interested to listen and in that connection, a transmission takes place and awakening happens to those few people. For me, it's like, I'm very happy with that. That's enough. Even if one or two or three people get enlightened throughout this period of time, that's a major in accomplishment. Excuse me, this is Isabella, I have a question. Hi, Isabella. I have a question related to the third eye meditation. In fact, I have two questions related to that. Okay. And excuse me, it's a slightly different topic than what we, 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 we heard just now. But um, so when you, when you go into third eye meditation, or what is happening what? to me is that... What? I'm sorry, when I go to where? Third eye. I third eye meditation. meditation. Okay. Okay. So I get different. I, I get a suite of colors of different uh, shape and intensity. And so I'm wondering what are those colors? And the other thing as well is that I do get uh, short movies, clips. So what do you do with these images or clips or movies? Right. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions before I can answer that question. Um, a is you're, you're doing a specific kind of third eye activation meditation, or you're just referring to what we did, we did today? More like what we did today. Right. Today, we just simply diverted our attention inwards. Yes, so, so that's, how, that's how I'm starting the third eye meditation and then I can I reach a state. I, I don't recall that I said this is a third eye meditation, but um, I don't think I said that, but it doesn't matter whether I said it or not said it, it won't make any difference. The fact is that you're, you're turning your attention inwards towards the source of yourself. You're taking, am I correct? You brought your attention inwards to, and you followed your thoughts. That's only the beginning. Well, then, I mean, when I, I reach a state when I do meditation, yeah? After a while, I, um, I, you, you, you use a, a word, you said that you, you start to feel good or whatever. I don't remember exactly how you said it, but you reach a state that is different than at the beginning of the meditation. And that is what is happening to, um, to me. And, um, and then 
there are those colors, uh, you know, right. Um, right. and those well, images. It, well, you're, you're, whatever you're doing is working, but does it make you calm and quiet? Do you go in a deep silence? Yes, in, in a piece, in right. build in a piece. Yeah, inner peace, exactly. So you're doing, you're doing it correctly. Now, when you're going, your attention turns inwards and you're traveling in the inner worlds, you're going in and sometimes you're seeing colors because sometimes pineal gland gets activated and you see colors and that's, and that's perfectly fine. However, don't get caught on that. It doesn't matter whether you're seeing colors or images. It's really nice if you do, and it's also okay if you don't. The idea is to take you and introduce you to your own self. The idea is to go deep into silence. That's the idea. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm reflecting idea, on what you are saying. Right. The idea is to go into a deep, quiet place. And that deep, quiet place is a space which is always here, something within you and everyone else. Something is always here. There is, there is like a presence, there's like a being, there's like you, the witness, the watcher, the self. I'm using different words. Something is always here. Now, what is that thing? Something is always like watching. It's watching. In this watcher, hearing the thoughts, hearing emotions come and go, the watcher is seeing the body is changing. This watcher is aware of the world's changing. As we can see right now, the world is changing very quickly. Something is aware of all of these things. Our problem is that we don't pay attention to this thing. Our attention is on the outside. We're not paying attention on the one who's watching. This work that I do is to divert your attention inwards towards this part that which doesn't change. This is the only thing that doesn't change. Again, I'm going to use some words for it. We can call it the watcher, the witness, the I am, the self, the Atman. These are words, God, Her Majesty, Something never changes. Something's always here. The entire goal of my teachings and sharings is to bring our attention to this part of ourselves and to recognize it. Once you recognize it, a phenomena takes place it begins to operate, an operation takes place. It's like something gets activated through that recognition. So you're doing a very good job. Don't worry about what the colors mean or don't mean. Don't get distracted by that. Keep your attention on the prize, on the main goal. The main goal is to help you to recognize this part of yourself. Why? The more you, no you notice it, the more you identify with it. 
the more you recognize the truth of who you are. And the more you, you become quiet and calm and your life changes because your vibration starts to change. Somebody who operates from silence and stillness operating from a much higher frequency, their vibration is completely different than people who are operating from the mind, the world of thoughts. Okay. Okay, thank you. I mean, I appreciate you bringing this up, but let's, let me make it very simple. Forget about fifth dimension, vibrations, frequency, all these things. Let's put everything away. The proof is in the pudding. When you do this meditation, do you feel better or you feel worse? Better. Then that's it. Then, then keep doing what you're doing because you're doing it right. Okay. I, I have an old saying and I've been sharing it with my friends. I say, if it's good to you, it's good for you. <laughs> Whatever that is. If during the day you have a glass of wine and that glass of wine is good to you, it keeps you calm, keeps you okay, the next day you wake up, you feel good, you're happy, then it's good to you. It doesn't matter it's wine or it's an herbal tea or it's health food or it's junk food. If it's good to you, it's good for you. The, the proof is in the pudding. Keep okay. doing what you do. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Can I just say something, Susanna? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I just want to say to Isabella that she's not alone in that because I have the same thing. And I'm just aware about the thing who is watching, right? So I'm aware about these images. I have them too. And um, so just to tell her that it's not only her. I don't have very much minds, but I I have pictures and uh, and very much uh, like colors, like very shining, energetic things. So yeah. it's not only her. This is about it for you. <laughs> the also, you know, in different stages when you're meditating, uh, we go through different different stages. When you're meditating and you go deeper within, different things happen. Sometimes as you're going deeper within yourself, you're becoming more quiet, more quiet, is you may acquire some psychic abilities and powers. So it's very common, not necessarily, but it's common that the deeper you go within, you may come one period of, of your spiritual practice, you come to spiritual powers. And don't be cut there either. Keep going. Because you may acquire powers and you may lose them. They don't really indicate the level of your awareness. It's a part of the path, part of the journey. Yeah, I had last time when we had the academy, I had the question about the parallel worlds because I am seeing, I'm not cut in it and I'm just like going away from that, but I'm seeing eyes looking through some kind of gate. So I don't go there, but it's just like coming back, coming back. That's why it was my question about the parallel worlds. Because, mm -hmm. of course, I wanted to have answer what the heck is coming again and again and again to me, right? So, um, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts about that? Can this... Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Is when I was a kid, 
I realize that if if anything that I can think of must be a possibility because I'm able to think of it. Okay. If I can think of something, then that's a possibility. It can exist. So can I know the unknown? If I can think of it, so it's kind of more falls into the category of known. Can I know the unknown? That which is not thinkable. I don't know. Can I know something I cannot think of? I don't know. Do I need to know everything? No. Can I know everything? I really doubt it. I don't. I realize I can become one with everything, but I cannot know it because the mind is not, doesn't have the capability of understanding the infinite. Infinity cannot be understood by a limited mind, especially when it's conditioned and it's primitive. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Th thanks for sharing, Susanna. Yeah. Cool. Anybody else? Any anything else? Anyone would like to share, or feel like talking about it, or if you want to write it on the chat box? Well, cool. Well, very nice to see you all. It's always a pleasure. I'm very happy. We have these moments together, these precious moments, these moments that maybe they never happen again, but we're here now together. And that's a blessing. Somehow, existence, technology allows us to come together. Let's not take this for granted because we may not even have it one day. You never know. But for now, we enjoy being together and connecting with one another and be able to drink from this unified field of oneness, this space, this form that allows us to see each other online and talk to one another and sit down and have satsang and meditate. So I'm very grateful but I will not take this for granted. A couple announcements that from April 24th to the 30th, we're going to have a uh, seven day free online global retreat. And uh, the topic of it is the rebirth of the new you. So, and we're gonna get into that. It's going to be fun. It will be two hours a day. And it's going to be from my 12 to, I have to check that actually. Yes, I believe it's my 12 to two, which is going to be same time as the Academy for the Scandinavians. And for those who live in LA is from nine to 11. And those who live in New York City is from one to three. So, Feel free to go on my website and register for it. Zarathustra.tv is the website. Our social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube channels, they're all Zarathustra 5D. So that's how Zarathustra 5D. If you have any questions and you'd like to communicate with me, please write to me. Uh, it's info at zarathustra.tv. And I look forward to hearing from you if you have any comments, any suggestions regarding the next topic for the Academy, feel free to write it to me. Um, 
Mm, oh, yeah, we will. Followed after the retreat, we're going to have a four day, another retreat. That's a paid retreat. And it's about reinventing yourself. I don't think we've put it up yet on our website, but we're going to be putting things up. We're going to connect it to PayPal. So if you want to sign up for it, you can. We're also going to have a shamanic healing circle. And these are all going to be in the first week of May. So everything's going to be put up on my website. Uh, if you feel like sharing this with other people, I would appreciate it. We're going to be emailing to you, sending you messages about upcoming events uh, and put things on Facebook. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, a copy of this broadcast will be emailed to those of you who are uh, join us on the Zoom. Um, the one people who are on Facebook, this is being uh, copied on Facebook right now. It's being broadcasted on Facebook. Sorry about that. And also we're going to put this video on our YouTube channel. Unfortunately, I made a mistake. I didn't bring the correct mics, uh, microphone I needed. So uh, our podcast is on hold right now. So we're not adding anything to the podcast because the quality of sound is not coming out very good. So uh, that's unfortunate. So hopefully in the future I can correct it. Sending you my love and look forward to seeing you soon. Namaste.